Fun fact, the Aquamarine is the birthstone of March, and as someone born in March who really likes the look of Aquamarines, I just wanted to give this deck a try. So here's the list that I have been testing. Of note, this is a pre-DBT10 list, so don't know the full last set list at the time of testing this, nor have I tested this against fully built out set 10 decks, so this is more of a concept, a starting point for you all to build off of. For the ride line, I run Tri-Connect Sorceress. You can really want any starter, but I just chose to be thematic. T-Square Sorceress is the grade one. This is just kind of the default best one. The only other card I considered running was Pink Moth Girl Maple, but because it only recalls itself once and gains the 5k, doesn't get any restand power, we'd have to overcall it to reset it or have the opponent retire it. I just thought getting the early draw one off of tier square is better for this deck, especially since it's so slow and doesn't get to full power until the fourth turn when you start Persona Riding. Primal Blast one for a draw one. It's not great, but it's also not terrible as well. And especially since our other draw cards either online till we're at grade three, or we have to kind of high roll into them. I think just an extra draw one to make sure that this deck can survive till it Persona Rides is the best option. Pentagleam Sorceress, I think, is the real MVP of the ride line. Being able to check top three and reorganize them in any way that you want when you go into your grade three is just such a strong enabler for your first grade three turn to draw cards off of various effects and set up triggers for your drive checks. Pretty much, it just gets the whole engine of this deck going. Through testing this deck, one of the biggest things I've found is despite it being able to reorganize cards on the top of the deck, it does not actually really manipulate the trigger odds all too much in terms of the entire deck. You're not really removing normal units that efficiently or throwing back in trigger units to actually increase the chances of checking trigger. You're merely just reorganizing those cards that you find on the top of your deck to try to be the most advantageous for your turn. So there are some turns where it can be hard to find triggers and that really hurts. But in terms of the first grade three turn, the reason I like Hexorb Sorceress here is because it does gain the extra power. It might only be three attacks, but I think this card makes use of those three attacks to make a really, really solid push on that that turn. And the simple answer is because you can throw a booster behind Hexorb Sorceress and make it so your opponent can't just two to pass it because you can give the 10k from the trigger onto Hexorb or the booster and then the Hexorb skill onto the booster and thus you gain 20k hitting over it. And also because Aquamarine doesn't gain too much power, it can restand something, but if your opponent checks a defensive trigger, since this deck does not gain power outside of Persona Riding or until you check triggers, defensive triggers still really do shut down this deck. And thus, I'd rather be able to put on huge number pressure, kind of either force the opponent to take it or start really whittling down their hand or even use PGs that they would usually rather save for later on that first grade three turn. So it's kind of like a win-win. Either I'm chipping away at their hand or I'm pushing them to higher damage so they have to guard more of the later attacks, the high power restand attacks. Moving over to the main deck, I do run four copies of Aquamarine, and this is because I think it is the best Persona Ride copy. It does net a plus one since it does gain a drive without stacking anything. Doubling of, well, really giving it plus 10k to all the triggers just means that the restanding units are hitting taller numbers, and also it's harder to guard the Vanguard attack under Persona Ride because this card, you have to account for the fact that your triggers are giving 20k, not 10k. And then just Soul Blast 1 for a restand where you check a trigger is really cheap and really efficient in a deck that just wants to check triggers. I still run three copies of the original Hex Orb Sorceress because this deck does not want to miss a Persona Ride and would rather go into the original Hex Orb Sorceress than miss Persona Ride. This card's still great and be able to stack a trigger, and there are some points in the game that I've seen a lot of triggers, and just being able to securely get one and stack one with Hex Orb Sorceress, allowing this deck to still do something, I think is better than risking it on Aquaman. If you whiff Opera Marine, it just feels really bad. You've lost a lot of tempo and Hex Orb Sorceress can solve that. And I also like this card. Sometimes I'll kind of go into it if I've seen a lot of triggers because it just lets me dig a bit deeper in the deck since the odds are I'm going to check a normal unit and it lets me get two cards deeper into deck, meaning I've seen two less cards meaning my trigger rate is up for Opera Marine the following turn. Moving over to the grade 2s, I run 4 Octoray Sorceress. This one is a very nice draw card, but also our best deck stacker. Being able to check top 2 and either leave them both on top or add them both to hand and put something to the bottom of the deck is our best way to start digging through our deck. So being able to plus and do pieces, etc. it's great. And then the additional skill to gain power is also quite nice. Note the English image on here is wrong. There is an errata for it. Follow the auto rear guard when this attacks text. That one is the correct one. But what this means is when you swing before Aquamarine swings, that this card is gaining 5k power and it's hitting over defense, which is hitting 25k, which is a nice number. But also when it swings after being restood, it's now gaining another additional 5k, which in a deck that wants to just pressure with large numbers, it kind of says to your opponent, either PG this or you have to throw out just that much more guard. So 
power gain might seem a bit redundant, but I actually think it's to the strength of this deck to beat down the opponent a bit faster. Effulgent Wizard is another new card here, which I like. At first, I was a bit uh, skeptical about it because if I check top card and I either if I know it's a trigger, what's the point of using this skill? Or if I find a trigger, I'm not really putting it to soul. But this card's really useful for the times where off of Octoray Sorceress, I check two normal units and I don't know what the top card of my deck is. It just gives us that additional check to see if it's a trigger unit, and if not, it goes to soul, meaning it helps fuel Aquamarine's um, ability, but also a few other uh, skills in the deck. This card's also nice if I just don't see the Octoray Sorceresses or any other ways to stack the deck. It's another free option, and I don't think that's a bad thing. I actually think it's really beneficial for a deck to have this, even if it's not using it every single turn. Also, its ability to gain 5k off a drive check means that I feel a bit better about boosting with this card to more evenly distribute power because it'll just gain more power anyway. I mean, it already does that off of triggers, but doubling up and pretty much everything I said with the Octoray Sorceress about gaining power and having your opponent guard also applies for this card. Wrapping up the grade twos, I run four Spiral Cutie Angel. I really like its Soul Blast to put to bottom deck to draw a card. It lets this deck plus a lot in the early game, and since it's a bit on the slower side, any plus to help the survived Persona Ride and also find its Persona Rides and its pieces is greatly appreciated. The other nice thing about this skill is your opponent might sometimes forget that's on the bottom of the deck, so when they're calculating trigger ratios, they'll forget to actually subtract the number of Spiral Cuties that you sent to the bottom of the deck from that count, because since you know those two, that doesn't play into the odds. I also don't run any Shufflers in the deck. While you could send back triggers with Octorace Sorceress, I just don't think that's the most efficient way to do it. It's also not guaranteed because you want to lift triggers on top, so you won't always be drawing the two to put one to bottom. And also with the Spiral Cutie Angel, that makes Shufflers even less optimal if you're putting these on the bottom of your deck. Spiral Cutie is also a good backup skill if we don't have the Octorace Sorceress in hand. Just being able to count blast one to still look at top two, put one on top, draw one is perfectly acceptable or actually you can put it on the bottom you don't necessarily have to put it on top so it has it doesn't it isn't as versatile as octoray sorceress but it still most of the time accomplishes more or less the same job that it does so thus i the combination of these two skills makes it feel like this fits into the deck perfectly especially since this deck is very persona right reliant Moving over to the grade ones, I run four of the Lalarita. This card's nice in case, in situations where on Aquamarine, I either only check one trigger, I can still do a double restand with Lalarita, but also when I'm on the original Hex Orb Sorceress on later turns, I typically don't use it on the first grade three turn just because I haven't had time to build up a lot of resources. But in the subsequent turns when I do Persona right into this, it still gives it access to a restand, meaning it's just a tempo increase. And of sure, losing the card on board, like this is really expensive, but the deck a lot of times has the resources to fuel this one and at that stage of the game retire it just get an extra attack that forces either more cards out of your opponent or possibly win the game is totally worth it and a big note i also want to make here is that i have not found the counter blast to be much of an issue and that's mostly because it's pretty easy to stack heal triggers if you find them and leverage them in a way to make sure that you're healing down as a pseudo counter charge it does take a bit of skill and practice to get used to doing it that way and some of you might not like it. I'll have suggestions at the end for that one. But for me, it's been very nice and serviceable and just lets me use Lalarita. And honestly, I'm not using it every single turn. It's more there as a nice pressure card that the opponent always has to keep in mind to think, okay, they always have access to that reason. Do I want to give them access to that or not? Bit of mind games there. And also it's a fun card to call down because a lot of times your opponent will try to snipe that, get that out of the way, even though it probably isn't the most optimal card because it's pretty easy to replace as opposed to one of my other tools. I run three of the Magical Purification Fupri here. This card on paper doesn't sound like it synergizes too well with the deck. I mean, it's a very, it's simple in what it does. You may still charge one when it boosts if you're a grade three or greater. And the reason I first include this card was actually just to make sure I have the soul always for Aquamarine. But most of the time I found it hard to actually want to use the soul charge when I'm stacking cards on top of the deck. But where I found value in this card is actually with the Effulgent Wizard. Because Effulgent Wizard cannot soul charge if your Vanguard is rest, but you still get to check the top of the card, by putting the Fupri behind it as a booster, what I can effectively do is on uh, Effulgent Wizard's second attack, I can check the top card. And if it's a trigger, leave it on top, don't soul charge with Fupri. But if it's a normal unit that I don't need, I can just soul charge it and possibly dig deeper into my deck for cards I need, such as Persona Rides or defensive triggers if I can still take some damage checks. Frankly, at the time of building this deck, there are just no better options. So this one, just this kind of nice little defensive play, builds up soul. I personally really liked it. I thought it was a nice way to round off the deck. For the rest of the grade ones, of course, I got my three Aegis Mare PGs. These can, of course, be Platinum Zeros or one, well, not or, and one Elementarius Sanctitude. This should be pretty self-explanatory. For the triggers, I run eight crit, three draw, four heal, and of course, the Amar to Noah. The eight crit should be pretty self-explanatory since we can stack those with Hex Orb Sorceress and crit to pressure lethal or push up a bit faster is 
ideal in this deck. I mean, this deck gains plenty of power. Friends aren't the most necessary here. Though of note, I do run the Blade Feather Dragon critical here. Most of the side columns will be grade twos, meaning Blade Feather will still make magic numbers with them and be able to put it to soul as an extra soul for Aquamarine. And giving 2k to Aquamarine behind with an 8k boost behind means it also hits a magic number, so it does have some synergies in the deck. And that's mostly for just trying to close out the game. I do run the three draws here. Because I can't always find the Spiral Cutie Angels to plus an early game, the draws can help beef up that beef up my hand to make sure I can survive until I get to my Persona rights or draw into more cards that I want to see. This deck I haven't felt has a deck out issue because it's not really drawing that much or digging through the deck that much. So I think that a draw trigger here is just ideal. I don't think this deck needs front triggers. Four heals should be pretty self-explanatory. And the Amar Tanoa, because this deck does have restanding capabilities, the attack pattern still lend itself well to Amar Tanoa just to check more triggers. And the more triggers you check, the more uh, power you're actually distributing, because of course under both Aquamarine, or both Hex Orbs, you're gaining additional power. A Fulgent Wizard also gains power. And just more chances to check triggers are really nice. Of note though, if you check triggers off of rear guards when Amar Tanoa is activated, Aquamarine does not in fact work because it says the battle that this unit attacked. So, Fortunately, no cheeky restands there, but that'd be too good. So since the time of me testing this list and the reveal cycle, Replenishment Angel has been revealed. In fact, it was revealed the day I'm recording this. And this card, I think, definitely has a place in Hexorb Sorceress. It is a bit expensive being a Counter Blast 1, but it's just an additional way to dig two cards deeper into the deck and be able to either put them on top, bottom, or really in any order to find those triggers. And for the same reason, I like a Fulgent Wizard being the extra tech in case I haven't seen a trigger. I like this card. And a Counter Blast is expensive, but I do think it's worth it to make sure that all the other skills are going off. I don't know how I'd fully change my list, but my first thought was replacing the Food Priest with it, and this would be a great card to then throw behind the Effulgent Wizard because we don't necessarily want to use that Counter Blast. Effulgent Wizard can check the top card, and in the event that it's a normal unit, then we can use the Replenishment Angel to check two cards additionally just to keep digging for those triggers. The big question I see with this card is though, Counter Blast. That's a lot of Counter Blast. Does this deck then in turn need Counter Charge? So of course, an easy way to kind of get back some Counter Blast is maybe cut back on the Lalaritas, or you're really not using them too much, but maybe just cut them all. That way you have the Counter Blast for the Replenishment Angel. I don't know if I quite like that answer, but it's at least one answer to this resource issue. But also there are some Counter Chargers that I'd like to point out, such as Faciata. This one's an easy one because it throws in the Grade 1 slot, which I think is the most flexible slot right now. But it is a Soul Blast too, and this deck, especially when you speed Spiral Cutie Angels early on, doesn't necessarily have the Soul to be able to afford Soul Blast 2 to Counter Charge when we're still wanting Soul for Aquamarine. But there are two other options. I say at least two other options that I think would be the best. Turnar is one of them. The only problem I have with this card, despite giving us both a soul and a counter charge, which is nice, is that normally I like to have the Effulgent and the Octoray Sorceress, one of each in the front row, but I would need to have a Turnar to replace one of them. And on top of that, Turnar needs a booster. So if I, a lot of times I prefer to have one booster behind Vanguard, and then of course I talked about the Replenishment Angel by behind the Effulgent Wizard, then Either I need to have another grade one to put behind it, such as another replenishment or Lalarita or whatever grade one I'm running. And I don't know how consistent that would be necessarily. So I don't love this option, but it might be something that's necessary because it just slows down this deck a little bit on tempo and power gain um, on that turn. Final option is Octa Devote Sorceress. Since I was worried about having a booster behind one of my grade twos, this one can always be thrown down in place of that booster and then retire to get the counter charge if need be, or even soul charge if I need soul for the aquamarine skill. I think the timing on this one though is a bit weird as I think the counter charge needs to be a bit more on demand. I mean, the same critique goes with turn art as well because a lot of times we're gonna use those counter blasts in the, uh, during the main phase. So you kind of have to use it a bit preemptively. And also it's another grade three in deck. It's a minus one. I think the minus one's honestly the least important part, but it's another grade three in deck, meaning another card to brick into off of drive checks. Though, since this deck kind of reorganizes this stuff, it might not be as big of a deal. And sometimes you can always just discard it off of PG. So I, none of these I'm sold on, but I do want to put them on your radar for potential things to test. Despite this list being a bit outdated at the time that this will be posted, I still think it's a good starting point to kind of learn Hexor Aquarine. It certainly helped me learn how to play the deck. So let me know down in the comments below. Uh, have you tested with this? And what cards do you like? How does your list differ than mine? I love exchanging notes because I hope it helps all of us build a stronger deck list for every deck that I cover. 
Uh, but with that being said, up at the same time as this video will be some gameplay of this deck in action to kind of accompany the a lot of what I talked about in actual examples. So you can find that video up in the card down in the description below or just on my channel. But with that being said, though, look forward to more content coming out from me real soon.